day of the feast of Pentecost here in Kentucky. And we have this feast today at the seminary. All the seminarians and the members of the community will renew in some way for their first time their total consecration to Our Lady, uh, the, to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this uh, day of Pentecost, also May 31st, which would normally also be the feast of the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So after the sermon, the seminarians will come forward to the communion rail and the sanctuary, and then uh, we'll have the, the, all of us from this community renewal of our total consecration to Our Lady, and perform their first uh, consecration to Our Lady uh, on this uh, feast of the Queenship, and also in front of the statue of Our Lady of Quito. We have here the statue of Our Lady of Quito, which came from Ecuador, and in 2013, on February the 2nd, uh, kneeling in front of the original statue of Our Lady of Quito in Ecuador on that day, consecrated the entire work of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and the entire work of the uh, of the Society of Pius X Marian Corps, the entire work of the of the of our uh, at that time the, the seminary which was yet not yet begun which was supposed to begin that year and did begin that year in 2013 all consecrated in advance to Our Lady in front of the original statue of Our Lady of Quito on February 2nd in uh, 2013 and then <coughs> the father People are also able to celebrate Mass in front of the statue of Our Lady and complete the consecration. Then also they have here the, uh, the, um, the statue we have on the altar is, is carved by, uh, apparently carved by one of the descendants and relatives of the original carver of the original statue of 400 years ago. And so remember that uh, our work is completely consecrated to Our Lady and then of course also our spiritual director and the uh, consecration to Our Lady and his whole priesthood is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary and trying to dedicate all the works that have ever been involved with the Blessed Virgin Mary is uh, Father Pongras, who is the celebrant of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass today. And we'll receive our uh, renewal of our consecration, uh, each of us, uh, to Our Lady. So then, uh, in our whole seminary, all of our apostolate. So in any case, this uh, epistle for the feast, and afterwards, after the Mass, There'll be a celebration, so we have plenty of uh, food down at the at the at the seminary, and uh, so a big celebration in honor of Our Lady and honor of also the Holy Ghost, her spouse, in this uh, feast of Pentecost, and then there'll be little games and activities in the in the afternoon. It's very simple, and then of course vespers in the evening, at uh, uh, you know five o'clock to finish things out. In the epistle for this uh, holy feast of Pentecost, the second greatest feast of the year after Easter, is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the days of Pentecost were drawing to a close, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a violent wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as of fire, which settled upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in foreign tongues, even as the Holy Ghost prompted them to speak. Now there were staying at Jerusalem devout Jews from every nation under heaven. And when the sound was heard, the multitude gathered and were bewildered in mind, because each heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these that are speaking Galileans, and how have we heard each of each his own language in which he was born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, the inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya about Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, Jews also and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we have heard them speaking in our own languages of the wonderful works of God in the Gospel given according to St. John, chapter 14. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him, and we will make our abode with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while yet dwelling with you. Of the Advocate, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
He will teach you all things and bring to your mind whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, do I give unto you. Do not let your heart be troubled or be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I go away and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would indeed rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the Prince of this world is coming, and in me he has nothing. But he comes that the world may know that I love the Father, and that, the, I, and that as the Father has commanded me, so do I. Thus for the words of the day is fully Now Marmion, the great abbot, Benedictine abbot, spends a lot of time speaking on the last words of the Holy Gospel today. When the Lord Jesus Christ says, As the Father hath commanded me, so do I. Seek facio. This seek facio is the life of the monk. It is the life of the priest. It is the life of the Catholic. It is why we are called Christians. What is a Christian? A follower of Christ. One who does what Christ does. That's a Christian. What is a devil? A devil is the one who tries to tear apart all things that Christ does. The devil is the one who does not do what Christ does. And what does Christ do? Christ says, as the Father hath commanded me, so do I. As the Father hath commanded me, seek Hachio. When Ascension Thursday came a few days ago, also on Holy Thursday itself, he said the same thing. These were spoken on Holy Thursday. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, whatsoever I have taught you. So whatever I have taught you, teach. What do we teach? What is Christ taught? He does not teach us only doctrines. He teaches us how to walk. He teaches us how to sleep. He teaches us how to stay awake at night. He teaches us how to work. He teaches us how to play. He teaches us how to think. He teaches us how to do good in season and out of season. To carry Christ where he is loved. To carry Christ where he is hated. To carry Christ where they care not for him. Teach. He is a very great teacher. We must go and teach the nations what Christ has taught us. But there is a very difficult problem. Why do it? How can we do it? God has given us a command to do as he has done. As the Father has sent me, in the same way the Father sent me, I send you. It is most expedient for you that I go. He said these words, and the apostles were sad. But why are we not sad 2,000 years later? Why were the apostles not sad 53 days later? Why is there not sadness in our church? Because the Lord Jesus Christ forgot something. Like the story of the backpack. <laughs> this joke that's been going around for about 4,000 years before they invented airplanes. Four people in an airplane, pick whichever four you want. Three, eight, three, eight, three parachutes and one backpack. <laughs> Last person, evil one, grabbed the backpack, jumped out of the plane. The parachute still remained. 
forgot, left something behind. He thought he took the last parachute, but he left something behind. And our Lord Jesus Christ, when he spoke, he said, it is necessary for you that I go, and your hearts are sad, but there is coming a paraclete, there is coming a consoler. Today is the day that he consoles. <coughs> Nine o'clock in the morning, the Holy Ghost comes down in the cold, worry hearts of the twelve apostles. It comes down into their hearts, descends upon them, and he warms them. And then he shows a thirteenth fire. He did not descend upon her, he is already in her. He's already his spouse. And flames of fire appeared over the head of the apostles that these twelve men have received the Holy Ghost, and they now have fire. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is necessary for you that I go. And they were sad. But St. John says, be quiet. Don't remind him. Because he might forget and leave behind his mother. He said, he will go. And the Holy Ghost was not there during those three and a half years. And we are going to have to go on a great journey to carry Christ to the very ends of the earth, to teach Christ to every nation. And he said he's going. And he said he's not going to come back. He gave us the education. He gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us the faith. He gave us grace. But we are men. We don't understand those things. Grace is invisible. Education is something you get in a book. doesn't taste very good. We need something else. And what is it that holds a man up? What is it that makes a man happy? What is it that gives a man strength? It has always been from the very beginning, since God created the very first man, it has always been a woman. And it will always be a woman. My buddies are dying. Pray for them. Look through their pockets and lose change. But if there's a girl, if there's a woman, we will destroy whole worlds, conquer all nations, overcome every obstacle in order to get to the girl that we love. That's what moves a man's heart. Now God made sure when he founded his holy church he sent the Holy Ghost but he left behind a woman. He left behind a mother. Even during those tragic three days in which he was buried in the tomb the apostles were ripped apart from him and his soul was ripped apart from his body. Even during those tragic three days, who was there with the apostles? It was the Blessed Virgin Mary. We also have the words spoken by many of the fathers and the saints of the Middle Ages. The word suzeret. Suzeret. Holy Ghost will come. He will suggest to you what to say. He says that uh, there, he is going to suggest to you, I will go away, come with you, no rejoicing, I'm going to the Father. May your heart be troubled, not be troubled. <laughs> the advocate will, the Holy Ghost, the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your mind whatever I have said to you. But it says in Latin, he shall suggest to you. Who makes suggestions? Fathers talk about the suggestions. One of the duties of a wife in marriage, one of the duties of a mother in the family, the father gives commands. This is his power. 
I am the man in charge. I have got the authority given me from God. And I tell you, this is what you must do. But the mother and the wife have not this kind of power. Of course, the wife and mother has power over children to give commands. But that's not what works. When a father gives commands to a child, it works. But what is it that gives a woman power? She suggests. She puts in mind what to say. She puts in mind what to do. Suggestion is like a wind. It just blows, and if it's hot, we are suggested to turn in the, fa in the face of the wind that we might be cooled. If it's cold, we are suggested to turn our back to the wind that we might stay warm. But the mysterious power of a mother and the mysterious power of a wife is that she's always suggesting. She's working gently. And we are very fragile creatures. We need someone to work gently with us. So our Lord Jesus Christ has ensured that his mother remain with us. We also know that in every marriage, supposed to be, the father dies first, and the mother stays on. We need the mother more. And somehow is a greater tragedy when the wife dies first than it is when the man dies. Because we need her more on this earth. We need her more when we are dying. We need her more when we're struggling. We need her more when we're rejoicing. We share our treasures with our mother. We share our sorrows with our mother. We share our worries with our mother. And when we are weak, She's the one we go to because, you know, we're not supposed to be weak. We're supposed to be strong. The Father told us to be strong. The Son told us to be strong. The Holy Ghost gave us strength to be strong. And so we want to be strong, but in fact we are weak. So what do we do? We let the mother fill in the gaps. So therefore, now Marmion mentions... And so Christ said, as the Father hath commanded me, so do I. And we travel through the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. His first command was to be brought to the temple and fulfill prophecy. How did he get there? His father carried him. Secondly, he had to suffer, be hated by men, be driven out of his own homeland, the land that was made to call the land of promise. There he is in the land of promise, and they're waiting for the king to come. And now the king has come, and they're going to put him to death. What does he do? He has to run away. He has to flee. Jacob fled by himself. Angels for a short time comforted him. But our Lord Jesus Christ let us know we're in a heavier fight than Jacob was. Jacob was afraid of his brother Esau, and Esau was going to kill him. We're not fighting Esau. We're not fighting the jealousy of Esau. We're fighting against Satan, against the powers of this darkness, against the greatest of most wicked lives, and we will have to flee. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he's a little child, he fled. But he did not flee like Jacob. Rather, the Holy Mother carried him and went with him the whole way into Egypt. And it was with her that he fled. And even when you come into the book of Apocalypse, it says, A woman shall go out in the desert. We are now in a time which we're going to have to go out in the desert. But the woman will go out in the desert. We in the desert, we shall not be alone. We say in our holy theology that Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. There isn't anything that comes from heaven that doesn't come to earth unless it passes through her hands. She's the one that distributes the graces. She's the one that hands out the grace. 
And we are very happy that she is the one because she is not so strict as her son. She is not so strict as the father. She occasionally hands out a little bit more. Very much like unto Boaz, who was a great great grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Boaz saw there were many girls in the garden walking behind the, 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 the sowers, and they would pick up the wheat that was dropped. And he instructed his servants, do you see that girl there? Not this one, that one, but the next one, the one that's called Ruth. I want you to drop a lot of, accidentally drop a lot of grain. I want there better be a big hole in the bottom of your bag. You pick up the grain and let it drop. You pick up the grain, let it drop. Don't let her know. Just make sure it drops in front of her, not in front of anybody else. And so the servants made very careful to listen to Boaz, and Boaz, the great grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She knows how to let things drop. Your son said, You must be very strict. I'm very strict. You must not give too much food. I will not. And then she drills a hole in the bottom of the bag. This is the divine wisdom, the divine economy. It is the way God willed things to be. From the side of Adam, God created Eve. And what did Adam say at the very beginning? I am not happy alone. And what did God say about Adam, that most beautiful work of his creation? He said, it is not good for man to be alone. Therefore he made from her side, his side, Eve. And Eve, unfortunately, made a great mistake of pride. She tried to outsmart the devil. She then made a great mistake of maliciousness. She tried to deceive Adam. She became with pride and maliciousness, though she would repent. Now what does it say in the sacred scripture and the Holy Mass? That Christ made human nature wonderful, but mirabilius reformasti. He has more wonderfully reformed it. Man is not the only part of human nature. To reform Jesus Christ and male humanity is only part of the story. There must be a reformation of Eve. There must be a reformation of woman. And what does it say? He has restored humanity, which is both male and female. And he has mirabilius reformasti. He has more wonderfully reformed it. Where is the more wonderful, more wonderful reformation of femininity? Of motherhood, of wife, of virgin. It is the Holy Mother. And what is her role? God made her to be a companion to our Lord Jesus, to Adam, Eve. And so our Lord Jesus Christ made her his companion. And he was a companion of her the moment that he was born until the moment that he died. She was there at the foot of the cross. She was his companion. And whoever wants to follow him, Whoever wants to have the heart of Jesus Christ inside of himself, who wants to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ, must have the Blessed Virgin Mary as a companion. Or we cannot have Jesus Christ near us. We can't have him in us. We can know nothing about him. Every bit of his body, every single bit of his body, from the toenails to the top of his hair, all came from her. And it is his will that if we are going to go to heaven, everything must pass through her. That's the way he made it. And that is why his final victory, which is going to come at the end of the world, and his penultimate victory, which is going to come very soon, is going to be by the hands of his holy mother. The Blessed Virgin Mary is not an option those that want to be happy. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, 
I am telling you, my 11 and 12 apostles, Matthias has taken the place of Judas. As the Father hath commanded me, seek faccio. So do I. He says it in the present tense. Because he is always doing the work of the Father. And he does it only by the suggestion of the mother. He waited 30 years until the marriage feast of Cana. Finally, after 30 years, it was when the mother suggested, is when she said, son, they have no wine. He was irritated. Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour has not yet come. But she made the suggestion, they have no wine. What must he do? Whatever she suggests. He did not, she did not command him to make wine. She didn't tell him how to fix the problem. She didn't give him an instruction horse. She wasn't a backseat driver. She just made a suggestion. They have no wine. And he knew what to do. But she didn't just make that suggestion. What did she do? She turned to the servants. She turned to us. And every grace that flows from heaven to earth from that day until the end of the world comes from these words. Whatever he says to you, do ye. Those are the final words we have recorded in the Blessed Virgin Mary. Whatsoever he saith to you, do ye. Those that want to do what Christ commanded, those who want to obey the Father, need to hear the Blessed Virgin Mary say, whatever he commands to you, do you, do you, you can do it. She is the one that gives us the strength to be able to do it. We are going into a great battle. We are always in battle. But this battle means we better be close to our mother. Jacob ran away. Jacob took such a long time to get what he finally wanted. Fourteen years. But when we have the Blessed Virgin Mary, we we'll always take shortcuts. She gives us what we want ahead of schedule. We don't have to wait so long. And she always protects. And always, 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 she says, do whatever he tells you. This is the point St. Louis de Montfort makes in his devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, a true devotion. We all want to do what Jesus Christ tells us, but not necessarily whatever. There are some things we're afraid to do, some things we don't necessarily want to do. We don't want to be thrown out. We don't want to be crucified. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to be despised by the world. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to struggle. But our Lord said, If thou wilt be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. How are we going to take it up? Unless she's there. Unless she's there. As time progresses, we will understand what his contemplation is. What does it mean to contemplate God? What does it mean to see God face to face? What does it mean to behold the things of God? We need someone to explain it to us. We need someone to help us to understand, to make it simple for us. And hence our Lord Jesus Christ said upon the cross, Woman, behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. And this is what he asked of this holy priest. My Archers of the Feb asked that every single member of the Society of St. Pius X consecrate themselves to Our Lady because we need her. And we are, a society is focused on the priesthood. What is the purpose of the Society of St. Pius X? It is the priesthood and all that appertains to it. And what is this first command of the priesthood? 
There were two commands of the priest. One was made on Holy Thursday night. When he asked three of the priests, could you not watch one hour with me? And hence we have a custom that we ask all to do in our seminary, to watch one holy hour with our Lord Jesus Christ each day until they die. And then, on that day of Good Friday, Behold thy mother. Behold thy mother. Why is it that priests are supposed to be happy? Why is it that we are called father? And we are a father when we first ordained. Father is still a father. After 50 years of priesthood. Father is still a father in heaven. Because we are the closest connected to the mother, to our holy mother. She will make sure that those that are connected to her shall have children. There must be baptisms. There must be conversions to Christ. There must be confessions and bringing souls back to God. The Father must carry upon his back souls and bring them to the kingdom of heaven. This is our obligation. This is impossible without the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have to pray for this love of the Blessed Virgin Mary to enter inside of us. And remember that her spouse is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the one who suggests to us what is it that this Holy Gospel means? What is it that the fathers of the church teach us? What is it that St. Thomas Aquinas is saying? How can we understand? And remember St. Albert the Great had a hard time understanding. He had a hard time with classics. He got tired of trying to study to be a priest. He climbed over the wall, tried to escape the monastery. When he climbed over the wall, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him and said, Albert, what are you doing? Because I'm running away. I can't learn this stuff. It's too hard. Albert, go back. Go back. And I will fix your mind. And you will be able to understand so well that he was one of the greatest teachers of the last 2,000 years. Taught St. Thomas Aquinas. Albert, go back. But that you might remember that all your brains came because I gave you a cheat sheet. All your brains came because I explained to you what, what the truth is. Three years before you die, you're going to go back to your normal, stupid self. <laughs> St. Albert did not ever have Alzheimer's. When they asked him questions four years before he died, bang, 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 bang. When they asked him two years, because where does our intelligence come from in the Holy Church? It comes from the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the spouse of the Blessed Virgin. She is, she is the one that suggests and explains what he means. Who wants to understand the St. Thomas Aquinas? Who wants to understand the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the creed? Who wants to understand how wicked is the modern world and what are the medicines to give to it to cure it? Whoever wants to understand these things must regularly speak to the Holy Mother. She will teach us. On this holy day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost ascended, and he brought the church on a journey. When the Lord Jesus Christ walked away at the cross, he also met his mother. Everywhere he meets his mother. So when we go on the way of the cross, when we have struggles, she will comfort us and meet us and give us the strength to carry the cross. When the time of crucifixion comes, she will be the one standing there to make sure that we persevere upon that cross. When we have to run away from our enemies because it's time to flee, she will carry us through the desert. When it's time to go to the temple, to be presented to God, whenever God allows these young men to be ordained priests, she will be the one to present them. She will be the one. And if we remain close to her, there is nothing to fear, especially not our enemies.
they shall be crushed, defeated, and destroyed by thy Holy Mother. What do we get to do? At the very end of the Gospel, this is John chapter 1, not the end of the Gospel, the beginning of the Gospel of St. John, but the end of the Mass, what does St. John say? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld these things. We are witnesses. The Word became flesh. We saw Him walk this earth. We saw Him die on the cross. We saw him defeat our enemies. What about the Blessed Virgin Mary? Where are we when we see? What's our seat? What's our place? It's inside of her arms. She carries us while we watch. We watch Christ from the arms of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's a very safe place to be. So I ask the grace that each of us in this time of the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or Our Lady of Quito said at the end of our present times, I will defeat the devil in a most marvelous way. It will be most marvelous. Right now there's riots going on in the United States. Cop, wicked cop, murdered a man. Now that means you can shoot all the cops, burn down all the cities. There is an attempt to create total unrest in our country. To destroy it, to usher in a one world government in which there will be total tyranny and ending of the legality of going to Mass, the legality of being a Catholic, the legality of following Christ. The problem is not the Chinese, the problem is the Masons, the problem is the Bilderbergers. The problem is those that are preparing the one world government for the coming of the Antichrist. And the, that is a secondary problem. And the primary problem is that those people of this earth, seven billion children of God, created by God, do not know him, do not love him, and do not serve him. And hence there is a punishment coming from heaven all over the earth. And how can this earth be brought back to God? In this time of great desperation, which is going to get worse, only by the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by doing whatever her son tells us to do, by believing whatever he says, by following whatever a Holy Mother Church has taught for the last 2,000 years, and none of these whatevers can be done without the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary in our hearts. And we're going to travel on a journey. How do we have a sign, a simple sign St. Simon's talk gave to us from the hands of heaven 800 years ago? We walk everywhere with Christ. We walk everywhere with the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's why we wear a scapular. Always wear your scapular. Never let it come off. The scapular reminds that everywhere we go, we go with Mary. And every weapon, we, every enemy fights against us, we, we, we defend with Mary. We don't need masks. But we do need scapulars. We don't need guns, but we need scapulars. And the Holy Rosary. Don't just say the Rosary, but in the solemn blessing of the Rosary it says, May those who hold the Rosary in their hands, may they be blessed. So if you're not very good at saying the Rosary, you can hold it in your hands, good to sleep with. Get at least one Hail Mary and then go to sleep. Carry it. Maybe one day you'll pull it out and say it. Carry the rosary. The devil hates the rosary. He's terrified of it. Wear the holy scapular. <coughs> Make sure our lady stays in our hearts. What do we do if we have a bad day? What do we do if we fall into sin? Go to Mary. She'll get us to confession. She'll get us out of it. How do we persevere in a fight? She'll hold us up. There's no better place to be. It was the will of God that man travels through life with a woman as a companion. We priests do not marry any other girl. We have nothing to do with other girls. Because we have the most beautiful of all women. She's ours. 
we behold her. She's always with us. When we have troubles, we know what girl to go to. And the Holy Ghost wants us to speak truth. She teaches us how to understand it. The Father wants us to obey his commandments. She gives us strength to be able to obey them. And the Son wants us to love all souls. And the Son wants us to be crucified for souls. And the Son wants us to be shepherds. And the Son wants us to carry. We can't do this unless she's always with us. And we can't be distracted by any other girls. Though we love them all. There is no happiness without Mary. And that's why the happiest person on earth should always be the priest. But he's the closest to her. And we must always be with her until the day of judgment. And though we have committed many sins and have been weak in so many ways, when that day of judgment comes, as long as we see her, we need not fear. This is very important. We must love God with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our being. This cannot happen. We will not be able to do it without her inside of us, without her protecting us. When the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am leaving, as he walked away, but what did he do? He left his mother. And then he left the Blessed Sacrament. And then he left the seven sacraments. And he left the Holy Ghost in his church. Left his mother with us. How far did he go? Well, not so very far. And where are we going? We are going to see God face to face. We are going to stand in the throne of the King. Each day we're closer and closer to the victory of seeing God face to face, and therefore we should run faster. As Father Hannafin used to say, the horse trots faster than trots home. And as we get closer and closer to home, we should trot faster. We should go faster because our home is in heaven, and our home is with the Father, and our home is with the Holy Ghost, and our home is with the Son. Our home is with all the saints in the presence of our Queen and Mother. The sooner we get there, the better. Well, let's ask the grace to run. Run fast for that home. And she is our companion on the journey. And wherever we find that she is not there, let's place her there. Let the grace that passes through her hands go everywhere where we go. And then God will bless us. We'll take care of our needs in all the times of trouble and in all the times of triumph. So will take care of us. Love God, love Mary, always. Look at you all.